All right, so section 14b, we did that kind of intermediate section there, but the limits at infinity, and, and what we're looking at specifically here are limits when the value of x is approaching either positive infinity or negative infinity. Negative infinity, we're going to have the same rules, but you do have to kind of think a little bit about um, the signs in some cases. All right, so when we're finding limits at infinity, um, there's a couple of things that are going to be helpful before we move forward, okay? And if we can under if we can remember these things, then finding limits as x approaches infinity really is is easy, okay? For polynomials, we need to remember the leading coefficient test. Does anyone remember what that is? You covered it last year in chapter two, I think it was. So it would have been somewhere around October, end of September. It's different from vertical line test. The leading coefficient told us something about the shape of our graph. Yeah, it's if it goes up or if it goes down on either end, okay? Um, and it had to do, too, with the degree of your polynomial, okay? Um, if the leading coefficient of a polynomial is positive, then the function increases to the right. And notice I'm only looking at the right-hand side. If the leading coefficient of a polynomial is negative, then the function decreases to the right. Now let me actually put something in here to clarify this a little bit more. Um, okay. Well, that's, that's where the degree comes in, okay? If the degree is odd, it will do the opposite on the left side, okay? If the degree is even, it will do the same thing on the left side. Okay, and I should put that in because that really if we're looking at the leading coefficient test that's what it says. If our degree is odd and we have a positive leading coefficient then it's going to go down to the left and up to the right. Okay, and it might you know go up and down as many times as we want in the middle but that's going to be the general trend. Down on the left, up on the right. If it's odd, odd degree, and the leading coefficient is positive. Okay? If it's odd degree and the leading coefficient is negative, however, then it's going to start going up on the left, it's going to come down, it's going to do whatever in the middle, and then it's going to go down on the right. Okay, so that's why I was saying if the degree is odd, it's going to do the opposite on either end. But if the leading coefficient is negative, it's going to go down on the right. Okay? No matter what it does in the middle. Now, when the degree was even, If the leading coefficient was negative, it went down on both sides. If it was positive, it went up on both sides. Okay. When we're talking about limits at infinity, really all we're really caring about is the right-hand side. Okay. Although, as you can see, 
if we were approaching negative infinity going to the left, then that left hand side would be significant. Okay? So it's helpful to know both parts. But all of this means that if we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity of a polynomial, our answer is always going to be one of two things. What are those? Yeah, it's either going to be infinity or negative infinity. And if you just look at the leading coefficient, you can tell which one it's going to be. You don't have to evaluate anything. Okay? So, remembering that will really make finding limits as x approaches infinity of polynomials easy. Because it's always either going to keep going up forever or down forever. The second thing that's helpful is to remember how we found horizontal asymptotes when we had rational functions. Horizontal asymptotes. Does anyone remember what the rule was, basically, with the rational function? If you can um, simplify, or no, if you can. Yeah. Um, it actually works regardless of whether you can simplify or not. The one thing I will say that makes us a challenge is that we're approaching infinity, so you can't plug in infinity, um, you know? So even if you can reduce it somehow, you still got to know. You plug in a really high number. You can plug in a really, really high number. Is there a time the degree of the numerator is larger than the denominator? If infinity is smaller, it's zero. And if the the same, you divide the leading coefficients. That's exactly right. Okay. When you have, when you're looking for a horizontal asymptote and you've got a rational function, there's three possibilities. If the higher degree is in the numerator, then if you reduced, you would have a polynomial. So your limit is going to approach infinity or negative infinity. Okay? But there are no asymptotes. If the higher degree is in the denominator, then the limit or I'm sorry, the asymptote will be f of x equals 0. That's your asymptote. All right? Um, How is there a limit? Well, think about it. what does a function do as it approaches a horizontal asymptote? It approaches the value of the function approaches that asymptote. So here, you know, we have this asymptote on y equals 0. Our function, if the higher degree is in the denominator, our function, either from the top or the bottom, is going to end up doing one of these. Okay? So as x approaches infinity, our function is going to approach zero. Okay, and we'll look at that more closely in a sec. Is there any like, I remember last year this kind of made sense to me, if you were to plug in infinity, and if the, the degree in the numerator is bigger, like infinity will be um, like raised to a higher power, so it will be a really, 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 really big number over the small one. Yes. And that's why like, like 0.02 over 30,000 is basically zero. Yes. Yeah, we're going to look at that in just a moment and see an example of, of those. But yes, that's absolutely right. What if the degrees are the same? Well, it on, um, if the degrees are the same, then it depends on... Yeah, the numbers in front, the coefficients. Okay, coefficients. If we have equal degrees, 
then our asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. Remember, leading coefficients are the coefficients of those highest degree terms. Okay? So, um, we will take the ratio of those two. And notice, this we're just finding horizontal asymptotes. But because we understand what a function does as it approaches the asymptote, you can see how these naturally translate into our three rules for limits. Okay? Limits at infinity for rational functions. We're taking limits as x approaches infinity. If the exponent is in the numerator is bigger, the limit approaches positive or negative infinity. And this is the same as what we were just doing with uh, polynomials, okay? If you really wanted to, you could use polynomial long division to, to reduce it, okay? If you're a glutton for punishment, um, you, can, you can use polynomial long division to, to reduce the fraction. If the exponent in the denominator is bigger, the limit approaches zero, and if the exponents are the same, in the numerator and denominator, then the limit is the ratio of the coefficients of those terms, okay, or the leading coefficients. And let's see why this is true, okay? Let's say I had just a simple function, x cubed over x squared, okay? Well, if I'm, if x is approaching infinity, if you think of it as, you know, what's infinity cubed and what's infinity squared, you might say, well, both of those are infinity. Yes, however, think about what the value is going to approach. As this is getting bigger, they're both getting bigger, but this one is getting bigger much faster because it's cubed as opposed to squared. Okay? So this ratio is going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? Now, it's possible it could approach negative infinity as well. But it will only do that if the coefficient here is a negative. Like if we had negative 2x cubed, then it will approach negative infinity. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. There are, and if you get into number theory, if you study some high-level mathematics in college, um, then you get into number theory and whatnot, you'll talk about degrees of infinity. And that, that may sound like a strange thing to think about, but think about it this way. How many odd numbers are there? An infinite number, okay? But wouldn't you agree with me that there are twice as many integers as there are odd, number, odd integers? They're both infinite, but it's obvious that there's twice as many of one than there are of another. There we have a degree of infinity. And then if I looked at all real numbers, you know, between zero and one, there's an infinite number of values, you know. <laughs> so obviously the degree of infinity that we're talking about there is, is enormous. So it's kind of a mind-boggling thing to think about, but... It comes in handy here when we're looking at limits because infinity cubed over infinity squared is infinity. Yeah. Can you go to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's our first our first rule. If the numerator has the higher power, it's going to approach either infinity or negative infinity, just like the polynomial did. Okay. Let's say the bigger number is in, or the bigger degree is in the denominator, okay? So 
So it would be infinity squared over infinity cubed. And if you were to reduce that, you'd have 1 over infinity. Okay? Well, technically, that's never going to equal 0. But the bigger the number you divide by, the smaller your result is going to be, right? I mean, if I divide by 2, I've got a half. If I divide by 20, I have 0 0.05. And if I divide by 200, I have 0 0.005. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller every time. Okay? So the limit would be 0. We're approaching nothing. Okay? And again, that keyword approaching is crucial here. Um, so, the final example... You know, what if we have, what if we have the same thing, okay? The same degree, but let's say that we had a 2x cubed here and a 3x cubed here. We would have 2 times infinity cubed plus, or over 3 times infinity cubed. Even though these are huge, they'll cancel each other out. And we just have two-thirds in this case. Okay? So in a sense, you can kind of think of it as evaluating. But uh, we just use the ratio of the coefficients, those leading coefficients. All right? Any questions so far? All right. Take a look at these three and see if you can't come up with uh, with a solution for each of those. All right, can someone explain uh, the first one to us? They're approaching zero. Approaching zero, why? Because the denominator is bigger. In the, the denominator, or the... The, the three is bigger than zero. Okay, the degree in the denominator is bigger, so we're approaching zero. Okay. Um, now, you might be wondering, well, what about the 3x and the 5 and the 1, okay? The fact is, they don't matter because they're so small compared with an infinity squared and an infinity cubed, they're irrelevant. I mean, what's 5 compared to infinity? You know, it's nothing. Um, what's even 3x compared to infinity squared? It's nothing, okay? 
So that's why this is really irrelevant and we can look just at this part right here. Okay? Because compared to our leading terms, those trailing terms there are to totally irrelevant. Okay? All right, so uh, how about our second one here? Three sevenths. Three sevenths, okay, good. Three sevenths. Again, all of this is irrelevant because they're so much smaller. These have the same degree of two, so we're just honing in there. What's the ratio? It's three sevenths, okay? How about our last one? Okay. Does X have the same degree? Yeah. What's our degree in that case? One half. One half. One half. Yeah, or point five. Even though we've got that minus one in there, again, compared to infinity, one is irrelevant. Okay, even though it's in the radical with the X here, we can focus just on this part. Same degree, take the ratio of the exponents, or the ratio of the coefficients. Okay? All right, so what I want to do here is use... Oh, that is the room in here. Oh, 55, yeah. I want to use the remainder of our time here to work through... Um, they only give you three to practice with, but they've got some different problems. Notice, too, though, they want you to do, um, they want you to look at the behavior near the asymptotes and figure out what the equations of those asymptotes would be. But then they also want you to look at the limit as x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity for each one. Okay? So, don't, don't forget to do all three parts of that. All right, so we're going to use the remainder of our time to work on that. And uh, um, you can use your calculator to sketch a little bit. Here we're relating something that we haven't dealt with specifically. Okay. But if you think about it, I bet you can figure it out just thinking. Um, and same thing with number three, okay? So we'll spend our time working on those.